and what's going on underworld crew and today we got some information i'm talking about emergency alert 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 emergency alert this man joe blackburn came out of the gutter not the gutter but out of the trenches that is game development on final shape to give us an emergency alert about him basically saying hey we messed up one of the state of the game here's some information that you guys want to know let's get into it and react to it and let's get right to the situation all right let's go Hey everybody, uh, it's Joe, and I'm just here to check in on how Destiny's going. Hope you're so good, bro. A few weeks ago, we put about a state of the game communication that wasn't up to our standards for what y'all have come to expect for those kinds of communications. Okay, so we're gonna pause right here. Guys, I know I was gonna do a state of the game video, but I was out of town when the state of the game dropped. And by the time I got back, there really wasn't much to talk about. I had talked about it on the stream. I probably could have made a highlight about it. Overall, if you guys don't know what he's talking about, the reason he's making this video to begin with is the state of the game came out i think a couple of weeks ago i can't remember the exact date and they talked about how they talked about the, they talk about state of the game like they usually do but this state of the game was a lot differently because they kept talking about how oh we're going to be focusing on stuff that people play with the most so the biggest issue the, the basically the whole article sounded like basically saying game development is hard it takes a lot of money shut up <laughs> they basically just said you don't know what you're talking about be quiet and long story short, they didn't want to work on it. They say, uh, PVP maps take a long time and they take effort away from like exotic missions and other stuff. So we're going to focus on that. And y'all are just SOL. Y'all should be happy with the miss stuff we give you. People were not happy with that. Gambit is basically dead. They basically said, hey guys, yeah, we know Gambit is screwed. We, we don't want to put any more effort into it because people don't play it even after we, we worked in Witch Queen. So we're just going to put in some, we're going to put it in the Lucent Hive and the Shadow Cabal. And that's all you're getting. And yo, you're going to get a new map, quote unquote, new map, which is an old map that's been revamped next season after the upcoming season. So people were upset. Um, they talked about how we haven't got a, we know we were supposed to get a new reprised, we're supposed to get new reprised um, armor every expansion. And they basically said, yeah, uh, we're not doing that because no one wears it. <laughs> they were talking about how no one uses the armor, so we're not making new ones. And I'm assuming they go over it, this whole thing. So that's just the state of the game. Overall, I was very disappointed. And the rest of the community was very disappointed. They was like, yeah, they should have kept this in the drafts because there was no reason. Like, why at that point, why did they even release state of the game? And I'm assuming this is why they did this because it's an emergency event where everybody is upset. And they're trying to get everybody hyped up for the Final Shape announcement event because it comes next week. So they're like, well, well we fucked. We, we screwed up big time. We got to fix this now. And I'm assuming that's why Joe Blackburn did this. It didn't provide the high level vision that we normally provide. And really and truly a bunch of us were heads down working the final shape and weren't able to give it the sort of it. care and love that we normally put into these kind of communications. And that's nobody's fault, but mine here on this. Glad taking responsibility. So I wanted to come in, talk to y'all directly and sort of give you an update on what we thought about the state of the game that we put out and what we think about destiny as a whole. Now this is going to be pretty different than normal. This isn't a, highly produced, i just want to say they got of, some uh, production blackburn got some huge huge cones to do this huge cones because basically they just like hey we, we we set a fire under them like we literally like bullied them and making this and this is unacceptable how bad that state of the game was but back into it i'm trying not to pause as much it's me in my office um it's not scripted i've got a bunch of notes here that we're gonna read through um and it's gonna feel probably more like you're just in a meeting with me, which is going to be rambly, and we're probably going to uh, mess up a few times. But really, I just want to go over where we're thinking about the game. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about the reveal coming out in, uh, next week. We're going to talk about PvP. We're going to talk about armor. Fine, we're going to talk mentioned. about our communication good, strategy. Good, 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 good. Those Gambit are the big is still ones. dead. Uh, so they, let's just get still ain't mentioned Gambit. Right Gambit is it. in the, in the ground. With reveal. Six feet under. Next week... We're going to go out and we're going to show an awesome showcase for the final shape. We hope it we're is. We're really excited about a bunch of the content in there. But got a lot of writing and truly, on showcase. that showcase is not a reaction. It's not prepared to, to spend another $100 in this game for it's a year. It's not a reaction to a bunch of the sentiment online. And it's definitely not a reaction to this video. It was recorded a while ago. I think I have a mustache in this video. Uh, and it's a pretty focused reveal. In the same way that... The game itself is pretty focused. I love that nerf gal. The final shape is focused on the light. It's focused on the enemies we've been setting up and the allies that you've come to know. It's not about a bunch of wacky new systems or wacky new themes coming into Destiny. 
Instead, we want to make an experience that's super easy for anyone who's ever played Destiny to come in and absolutely fall in love with the content that's before them. Okay, okay. I, I think the other thing that's really important here to know as I sort of look at my meeting notes uh, is that communication is built for a pretty wide audience. Thank you. Much Appreciate wider it. than probably whoever is watching this video. So what we're not going to talk about is things like a big new strange coin refactor and Zer revamp. The Zer revamp in the final shape. We're not going to talk about things like uh, a refactor of HUD elements where we're making sure the buffs and the debuffs are more clear, and you oh. can tell what's happening in higher. Dog, this is this is such a must needed change. There's been so many times where I'm losing account of how many buffs I got on. And she said buffs and debuffs. We're gonna be able to tell what debuffs we put now too. Mm, delicious. Love a combat. It's gonna again really be focused on the story. Really be focused on the location. So I'm and assuming it's going to be just we'll like Life Maybe we'll get into a little bit about how the live service of Destiny is going to change mm. after the final shape. Life fall. Boys, we need this live service change as soon as possible. ASAP. I need, I don't need a little bit. I need an entire joint block of that showcase dedicated to live service revamp. Following that showcase, Dan, our GM, and I are going to be on set taking questions, uh, dotting T's, crossing eyes or maybe the reverse of that on what you've seen in the showcase. So we'll provide a little bit more clarity on what was shown and we'll probably get into some ways that maybe our philosophy on the final shape or specific details might have changed over the last few weeks since we recorded the showcase. All right, I think that's it for reveal. Uh, if I'm you looking at the sheet it? next, we've got PVP. Mm, so let's start with the state of, Destiny, of PVP the right now in Destiny. Uh, what have we been doing? What have we been focused on? A lot of We've been really focused on sandbox balance. So, like a big focus of effort last year was just making sure that. I just want to say, guys, sandbox balances are great, but sandbox balances are not content. <laughs> yes, we're, you're updating the game and buffing and nerfing stuff, which is cool, but like that's that's not content for PvP. Strand came out People in that a good saying place that are just wrong. and got to live sort of in harmony with the rest of our Crucible ecosystem. Aside from that, we've been focusing on putting up two weapon balances per season, one at the start, one in the mid-season. And we've been focusing on ritual updates to PvP, be this uh, mode updates, point updates, reward updates at the beginning of each season. Finally, if we flip over to our agenda, uh, we've been focused on making one new map and a few reprises a year. Now, all that aside, I think it's fair to say this approach is not producing the crucible that our players expect us. So what are we, we going to do? How are we going to change? First, let's talk about maps. Mm, right to the juice. It's clear that the sort of slow trickle of PVP maps isn't having the effect we want. No, it is and not. although it gets an injection of PVP maps every so often into the ecosystem, it's also forcing this like one new map a year. It means we're trying to build a map that has to do everything, which means it can't be good at anything. So next year, we're going to change our philosophy. What are you changing it to? Instead of a slow trickle of maps throughout the year, we're going to focus our effort into a single map pack that's free for everyone. So imagine new maps coming in one drop. We absolutely do. Where love we can to make see a it. bunch of new experiences that can all be good at specific things and adds a big variety in a single. That way, we're getting new competitive so maps too as well. From beautiful. our strategy, so beautiful, it's going to beautiful, take us beautiful. time. This is content. To sort of understand the details of what we're putting out here and getting that out to y'all next year. Okay, year maps fine. are great, it's gonna be free. It's but gonna be cool. we still really believe that PvP is about the foundation, yep. and new maps aren't gonna solve a foundation. Mm. So, modes. First of all, I'm really excited about what's coming out in Season 22. Me too. I'm First, excited for Checkmate. with Checkmate. Checkmate Bring is a checkmate. mode all about that sort of primary fire, basic weapon excellence of Bungie games, and being able to show that excellence in a PvP setting. It's what a bunch of our Give like really marksman style PvP players have been asking for for a long time since Destiny One, mm -hmm. and we're finally going to put a mode like that in the game. And I'm super excited for a bunch of those players to get that experience starting right away in Season 22. Next, we've got Relic, and so Relic is is a different kind of mode, and it sort of is a building off of these experiments that we've been doing with things like Fortress or Eruption, where it's about this quality destiny sandbox experience of your guns and your powers 
that escalates when you succeed in sort of a crazy mayhem. I'm excited experience. to use the AU field. We think the balance of those two things is, gonna be great. is a really great time to sort of spend away from the other parts Inside. of the game and get the full spectrum of what Destiny has to offer. I'm really excited about things like Fortress, and I'm really excited that Relic is going to provide an experience like this that is both, you know, fun for people that are really good at slaying out and also has these sort of like high octane hijinks moments to it. Mm -hmm. But but that's what we've already committed to. So let's talk about some new things that we think we need to do. One, we know we need to bring more of our modes into the core playlists. That's we've been putting a lot true. out in labs. We've been putting a lot out in Iron Banner. And to be honest, there's a few obstacles to us putting these into our core playlists, be this VO or small bug level issues that we just were like, ah, I don't know if we're ready. I think that has been blocking us from doing the right thing here. So we're going to take on some of that bug wake. We're going to take on some of the, a little bit of the jank. And we're going to say, no, 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 no. This, this isn't worth us not putting into the mode. And so we're going to take some of these modes that we've been putting in Crucible Labs, that we've been putting in Iron Banner, and taking them and putting them into the core PvP experience that our, most of our players You can meet you, I think I speak for everyone here. You can miss the PvP community with Fortress. Nobody want to play Fortress in Quick Play. But you could pull in everything else. <laughs> uh, we've also heard a lot about comp, and particularly about the way that we reward points in comp. Mm -hmm. I'm tired so, of getting five points. Uh, one. We want to take a, a new approach the way that we're balancing points in comp. Right now, we think it's just weighted too much on your personal MMR versus the people you're playing against. And you when spin, you win you or when you lose a game, it can be really unpredictable how many points you're getting. We're going to go to a simpler system where winning or losing just matters more. Finally, I'm, glad, I'm, get, I'm so glad to touch on that, bro, because like, I guarantee, I guarantee everybody's seen the clips of people winning games and getting like plus five competitive points, and then you lose and lose like 350. It, 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 it's, it's boring. It's annoying. Not even boring. Annoying. It makes me just not want to play anymore. It makes me want to get my three weapons a week on each character and then dip out. <laughs> Great modes like Countdown most Rush people already do, anyway. into competitive and get modes that people are less excited about, like Rift, out of the rotation. The problem Making with Rift is experience uh, more about the, uh, the game modes. That, the problem with Rift and competitive is it's not. I actually don't mind Rift and competitive. It's the fact that we get Rift on maps that don't play well on Rift. Like I can't remember what map it is. That freaking map with the inside and it's got like the two. I got. I put a picture of it on the screen. The spawns on that map for Rift. Are atrocious you can kill somebody grab the spark take three steps towards the rift and they're respawning the person that you just killed is respawning and then for, if forget about it if you get a team wipe and you grab the spark you're you're, you're getting dunked on you're not going to be able to defend again because the spark is too close if you get the far spawn like it's, it's just too close it's too close like they need to figure out like some apps just don't need to have rift on them i'm fine with rift it's the only objective game mode that you can use to promote com competitive teamwork so i'm fine with it it's just the maps that they use for it is bad <laughs> like people like don't just force rift on these maps that don't play well with it but you know our players enjoy okay so we've talked map strategy We've talked modes. Uh, I want to talk one other effort we want to do here. Uh, we're going to bolster what we call a PvP strike team. We're finally getting a PvP team after multiple years of no PvP team. Thank goodness we're actually being worth worth it. People, they understand that people play this game for PvP. I don't want to hear any of y'all PvE players saying, Destiny needs your PvE game. No, bro, we got our own team now. It may not be as big as your team, but we still got a team. Mm. Throughout Destiny development, <laughs> we've built strike teams for efforts before. Um, I, this has probably been sort of invisible to y'all in the audience, but in moments like in between uh, Curse of Osiris and Warmind, we built a strike team for Destiny investment. This team was sort of built around hey, how can we make it more rewarding and more enjoyable to just get stuff in Destiny 2? This team built stuff very quickly, like what would eventually become the master working system. They also went through, knocked out a whole bunch of bugs, knocked out a whole bunch of quality of life issues. We're going to take the same effort and we're going to build a PvP strike team around the same principle, but have it focused on the Crucible. 
You love to see it's it. It's going to be led by PvP developers. You love to see it. And uh, it has a really interesting playbook for how PvP this team. works. And that's that and first the, the team, team decides what they want to do. You love to see they it. They as a team get together say, hey, these are the changes we want to make. Those changes go through me. They go through our systems uh, CD. And then when we say, yep, those are great changes, they immediately get communicated with you all in the community. Right, so this will be a going out in a twa, uh, twid, going no, out in again. Uh, a Twitter post, or better. going out on Reddit, about right? Just some sort of, sort of immediate budgie. blast, like, hey, these are the changes coming. And those changes get communicated even before they start getting implemented. And then we start getting implemented. We found this formula is a really successful way for us to be able to push through changes quickly into the community. And I think one of the most exciting parts about these strike teams is we build them based off of community feedback. So these strike teams are built from the ground up to look at, hey, what are the pain points that are hitting our community the most? And so all this list is going to be built and burned down from, hey, these are the big issues the PvP community is looking at in Destiny. All right, I think that's the end of the PvP part of our agenda. If I'm looking you know, at our notes glorious here. Glorious part of PvP uh, it was. I, think we're now about I love armor. that Gallowhorn dog, the Destiny uh, Taken King background. Been a while I think that's the penguin from Beyond about Light armor. in the background, the um, plushie too. But we might have talked about it before. I, I want to start with this talking about more Destiny stuff. armor visual categories in Destiny. Um, so at the top, we've got what we call aspirational armor. This is stuff like raids, trials, dungeons. Beautiful armor. We Besides want the armor that cloudy. comes from these activities to be flashy uh, or to like really talk about the core of what that experience is. Um, it's really important that when players earn these armors, they feel proud, they want to wear them, they want to show them off in the tower. Next, we've got silver, right? This is armor that you can buy for the store for silver. Uh, it's important for us that this feels like it's sort of breaking the mold of what you could expect in a Destiny game. It's our place to experiment with stuff that's a little bit fourth wall breaky. Uh, and importantly, we want anyone that spins silver on armor to feel like, hey, it was worth it, right? Like, I'm I got my money's worth. I actually spent spin this silver armor. on armor cool. in this game. I'm uh, interested. Then we have what I call narrative armor. Um, this like, is I haven't spent silver in Destiny outside of buying the battle pass and buying one last word skin for silver. That's it. I haven't bought silver in this game ever since. Let me know about that in the comments. How many? How much? How much silver y'all bought? Let me know. I want to see how many y'all part of the problem. This is the stuff that you'll see in any sort of our marketing trailers. This is the stuff that you earn in the season pass. It's the stuff that you earn in the post game of a campaign. And it's really about driving home what that specific moment in time was. So in season 21, it's deep sea diver armor, right? In Witch Queen, it's a sort of like weird paranormal detective armor. Uh, you'll see what it is in the final shape uh, here in a week or so. But, but that armor for us is really about like driving home this clear, consistent fantasy of like, oh yeah, I was there. I remember that time in Destiny. Finally, we've got rituals and blues. And this space has always sort of been about that core guardian fantasy. What does the guardian look like that you would imagine sort of the stereotypical everyday guardian or the like the guardian that you see on the front line? Maybe tragically a guardian that tried to go into the portal of the traveler and then gets cut up into a moon. This is this is Should that, made it a warlock. That spot. And we need a lot of armor here to sort of flesh out those fantasies. Only a Titan would do it though. Now, sometime in the middle of last year, we sort of reevaluated our priorities on armor. And we said, hey, we need to be spending more on our the, the armors that people care the most about, the people that, that earn, that spend, that do all this to this so they can sort of get these armors in the game. So this is like our, Understandable. our PvP stuff uh, in Trials, our aspirational stuff in Raids and Dungeons, our narrative stuff. We thought we weren't consistently hitting the bar enough in those looks. And I think that since that initiative, we've been really successful in this. We've put out great armor stuff so far in terms amazing. of like cowboy uh, armor for mm -hmm. uh, Spire. We've put out awesome stuff in the Root of Nightmares uh, raid. Beautiful armor. And we've put out a bunch of ar awesome armor sets for sort of a deep sea fantasy last season and season of the deep. Now, what we failed to do when we reprioritized, hey, where are our resources going, is communicate this to you. So, so we knew that when we made this change, we weren't gonna be able to make a ritual armor set every single year. And we thought, okay, well, that's fine. We have a lot that fits this sort of base guardian fantasy. But we should have communicated that out to you. Yes, you should and have. And so, one, I'd like to say, this is not a thing that we're never going to invest in. We're investing in it again in the final shape. There's going to be a whole other ritual suite of armor. Um, and, and we're excited to, get to sort of replay that. Now, the question is, is this armor going to be copy and paste at the end? Because these past couple of seasons has been the same armor, just with the colors and decals swapped for each ritual playlist. So we'll see. But just because we're doing that in the final shape year, that doesn't mean that we communicated this soon enough. 
So also for this year, we want to take an armor set that we were going to put in the Eververse and we're saying, no, 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 we should have communicated this earlier. It's really important that our fans can trust us. Let's take this armor set that we were going to use in season 22 for the Eververse set. And let's say, no, it's going to be free and we're going to put it as a ritual rewards. You love to see so it. The next season, before the end of the season, you should see a brand new armor set that you can earn through playing Strikes, Crucible, Gambit as like a ritual reward for doing this. You're a listening. Brand new armor you love to see it. Uh, again, we're, we're confident in our strategy going forward. We believe this is the right priority going forward. But also, it's our responsibility to communicate this stuff sooner. So that's not to be honest. There was any of y'all actually putting that freaking re remade armor in y'all fashion? Because I sure wasn't. I don't think anyone was. I haven't seen anybody walking around with that armor. Actually, that's not true. But still, who was really using that armor? So technically, he's not wrong. And I appreciate them even saying, hey, let's give them armor because we did not tell them. But if they wouldn't have said that anyway, I'm like, yeah, we weren't really using it. People were just getting upset because we were promised it and we didn't get it. So still, we'll see. So we want to make I'm sure proud of them for giving them, the right thing giving us armor for free. All Love right. For... I think that's armor. Uh, let's talk about comms. Okay. Uh, we've talked a lot about how the development team is very busy. And I, I think that although we really want to be focused on delivering great content to y'all and making sure that's our top priority, that doesn't mean our communications have to suffer. No, it is and not. So the first thing, we want to be talking to y'all more. But talking to y'all more, our number one priority, we have to keep our community members and our community leaders safe from the Bungie side. Uh, I don't want anyone that signs up to come work at Bungie and to talk to y'all about the game to have to worry about their personal safety. They don't want another, dam uh, another DMV so situation. I respect that 100%. So we keep using That's our fine. branded accounts. You'll cool. see these on... Uh, Twitter, and you'll see these on Reddit, right? And we want to be using those accounts with more personality, going and talking okay, to y'all more. I'm about to say that. Because I just want to say, thing ever, is, since they, ever since they switched to the Destiny team account, uh, the comms have been less and less. And I don't know if this is just rose colored glasses, but I, sh I surely do. And I guarantee I, there's other people out there that's watching this video. If you do agree, put it in the comments below. The community management and talking to the community has not been the same since before they started their destiny team account which is understandable and dmg left granted dmg left for a good reason and he's already working at riot i think so they're gonna he's gonna do great things over there it just seems that ever since that whole situation i don't know if it's a combination of the lawsuit that they had and they were focused on that and nobody wanted to talk to him talk to the community because ever since that situation with twilight garrison and then dmg then you got freaking degenerates being rude to people just over a game like oh, he's just a community manager calm down he's not developing anything he's just trying to help out and connect the community with the developers but ever since they made the distant team account they've been communicating less and less and it's less about communicating and more about fixing typos in twigs or twabs uh, how i forever call them so we'll see there, this is a whole bunch of talk. I want to see them put the money where the mouth is and see where we go from here. Me. I, I play the game a bunch. And right now, I don't have a bunch of time to be writing sort of big, long blog posts like you would assume. But when season 22 rolls around again, I'm going to be in the game a lot. I'm going to be mm -hmm. playing a lot. So what we want to do is commit to a few times next season and the season after. I'm just going to stream mm. me playing the game. You'll be able to come we ain't and seen talk to this me. This is like trials of Osiris. Reveal poor. But it is. A I'm going to put this clip in here too. The legendaries of two grays and a, not two grays and a blue. Two blue, two tokens and a blue. <laughs> See the people that will help you complete this activity. We currently have a pre made fire team, and they are, in fact, heroic. Now let's check this out. Mm. I promised before that this was the most rewarding public event. And there we have it. We have two chests. So for good. a change and uh check out those sweet sweet moves <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, for, no, I never go forget seeing that in that review of curse of osiris and they was doing that oh my goodness bro the public event it's like the most this public event is the most they gave the best loot in the game and they opened it and then freaking d's got two coins in the blue <laughs> A great time to just be like, hey, check in with Joe. These are the things that we're feeling. Get his opinions on them. Uh, and hopefully, if I can get and play with some of our like elite players, me learn a more a bit more about the game. I learn a ton from playing with you all in the community about different builds that are exciting and different ways to roll. So I want to commit, get out there, play some PvP, learn from some experts, 
and play alongside all of you next season. All right, the only thing that I have left here is closed. Uh, so I think that means my rambling on here today. He did a great is job. Uh, I didn't so see any cuts at all. So I feel for, like he did a great job for a lot of time. This. He did great. Uh, really excited to see a bunch of y'all next week at the reveal. Bye. Dog, this video was great. It was exactly what we needed. I'm, I'm great. They came out. I'm very, very happy they came out and did this because originally. I thought they were just going to hold all this information. They were going to put their head to the ground, go silent until this showcase came. And if this showcase didn't bang, it was going to be riots. So I'm going to assume when they say, hey, bro, we can't, we can't, cannot let this freaking boat fly into the freaking ocean. Because fly into the fire, I mean, ocean be the same thing. So we cannot let this boat crash. So we have to give out some information. We all, we all, they probably really understood how bad the sentiment has been recently about the game. And then this state of the game just came in and said, here, you want to see me do it again? And that's exactly what happened. So they probably feel like, hey, we need to do this emergency state of the game. But anyway, I appreciate you guys watching the video. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for making all the way over here. Hope you're having a great rest of your day. And hope you had a good one. Stay safe. And remember, stay spooky. Peace.